Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Malman and I'm a first grade teacher here at Cranberry School. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the reading and writing workshop model that we use in the classroom. I'm going to be showing you a whole presentation. So throughout this presentation, you will see resources for remote learning for grades K to two. Supporting your child as a reader and writer through the workshop model is an excellent way to help your child grow as both a reader and a writer. And I'm going to show you throughout this presentation what that looks like. This slide discusses the importance of reading each day. Even just 10 minutes of reading exposure can help improve a child's reading skills and also help them find a love for learning. The centerpiece of the classroom. Although classroom libraries look different this year, classroom libraries are the centerpiece of the classroom. The district owns curated libraries individualized for each grade and classroom. One of the components of reading workshop is that students have a variety of books in their bag of books. On the next slide, I'm going to discuss the different types of books children keep in their baggies. And in these pictures, you'll see what a typical classroom library might look like. It has a lot of colors, a lot of book options, usually some great places to sit and read, and it helps create that real love of learning. So on this chart, you will see signs to watch for when choosing a book. When students are choosing books, it is important for children to know when a book is just right for them. Teachers typically encourage students to have a variety of books in their bags, books that are just fit for their level, maybe one or two challenge books. They can also have a couple look books. Younger students typically have more books in their bag. As students get older, the books they choose tend to be longer and more challenging, so they might not have as many. I know there's a good five finger rule that we use with some of the younger students. And if you put up, if you open to a page in the book and you can't read more than five of the words and the book is a little bit too hard for you. If you can read all of the words with ease, the book might be a little bit too easy for you. So when you are reading a book to see if it's fit for you, put up a finger for every hard word that you find. Typically you wanna find maybe one to three tricky words that your child is able to work through independently based on reading skills taught in the classroom. On this slide, I'm gonna talk about reading stamina. Readers read longer to get stronger to build those reading muscles. Reading stamina is a child's ability to focus and read independently for longish periods of time without being distracted or without distracting others. Reading stamina is something that parents can help students develop as well. Building stamina is a very important aspect of reading workshop. The district is building long stretches of time for independent reading into the school day. As students get older, the amount of time a child reads without getting distracted becomes longer. So building reading stamina starts very early on in kindergarten with small goals such as reading for three minutes straight, reading for five minutes straight, and going up and really trying to work towards building that stamina. The perfect reading spot at home. Finding a comfortable and smart, smart reading spot at home and at school is essential for learning. The two most important questions to ask when finding the perfect reading spot are, where can I get the most reading done at home or in school? What do I need to do to keep reading and not get distracted? So each child is different and each child is going to have a different comfortable reading spot and finding that smart seat for your child at home is going to help them find a longer love for find a love for learning and also to find to build their stamina. Staying focused. Here are some helpful tips you can use to help your child stay focused. Teachers like to foster children with choices, especially when students feel like they're stuck. So if something is too loud, I always encourage a student to go find a new reading spot. If they get stuck, they can ask their teacher for help, ask for help at home. They can use some of their reading strategies, or maybe sometimes they're just not in the mood to read. I know that can happen too. So a lot of times we give options there, like, okay, why don't you take a quick break? Why don't you go for a walk, get a drink of water, try again. There are always options to give children when they feel like they are stuck with reading. Self-check-ins can help build reading confidence and also foster independence. When children feel like they're not in the mood or feel like giving up, knowing they have options can help create a stronger love for learning and make, they, make them feel more independent. On this slide, you will see an overview of reading and writing workshop. Many lessons are about seven to 10 minutes long where your child listens to the teacher teach the lesson. As you can see, majority of the workshop model is set aside for independent work. Students take the learning objective from the mini lesson and apply it to their independent reading or independent writing. To wrap up both reading and writing workshop, sometimes a partner share takes place to close out the lesson. 
But the major part of the workshop is really applying those skills independently and trying to work through some productive struggle, which we will talk about a little bit later in the presentation. So here is how I just how I discussed the mini lesson independent work and then we wrap it up with a share. Here are some examples of things children can do during reading to build reading and writing skills reading books, just really creating that love for learning, providing tons of books in the classroom, at home, when libraries are open, also online. We have a ton of ebook platforms that children can use. Also reading songs. I know in K-2, to two, we like to do a lot of poems, a lot of songs and things like that because it helps really create a stronger love for learning and also helps them remember some of the words and reading skills. Using phonics charts are very helpful. A lot of teachers will print out mini anchor charts for students to keep in their reading notebook or in their reading folder. Going on a word letter hunt or a sound hunt, things like that, little scavenger hunts really create that fun environment for children to learn all different words and apply their reading skills. And also rereading. I know that's a big skill that teachers discuss. Sometimes students think that they read the book once, it's time to put it away. But rereading books help them focus on a different skill each time they read. Maybe the first time they read, they're working through hard words. The second time they're learning about the characters or looking at the pictures. It does help continue to build those reading skills. Learning how to work through tricky words is an essential part of reading skills in young learners. It is important to take a step back and let students work through a little bit of a productive struggle. Productive struggle is the process of effort learning that develops grit and creative problem solving. Productive struggle is a state of engagement that enables students to work through increasingly challenging problems and new problems they have never seen before. Here are some strategies that can be used to help children work through tricky words and to continue to help building those reading skills. Pointing to the word, stretching out all the sounds, saying the word the best that you can, thinking about if that word makes sense in what you're trying to read, and again, also rereading. I always tell my students that once you figure out the word, go back and reread that whole sentence with the word so that way you know what the sentence is trying to say. On this slide, you will see some ebook platforms. Your child may have used some of these at home. They may have used them in the classroom. They are available to all of our students. And if you ever need help with accessing them, we have wonderful technology teachers and also your child's classroom teacher can help you with that as well. On this slide, you will see things that your child can do during writing. So I'll start at the top. We have an idea where you generate lots of ideas. Sometimes students will start by making tons of book covers and then they'll pick from that. They'll make a list. Um, then they will touch the paper and tell the story. So usually before we even start writing, we speak the story to someone at home. We say it to our teacher. We say it out loud to a partner. You touch each page and say what's going to go on there. Then you can add pictures and labels and sentences, really starting to draft the process. And then revising and editing. Even though um, in K-2, children are really young, they, it's still very important for them to go back and reread their work, make some marks with some pens, maybe use a self-checklist to make sure they have punctuation and capital letters and they have their word wall words spelled correctly, and also adding a lot more detail to their pictures. Finding the perfect home, at-home writing spot. Just like finding a comfortable and smart reading spot at home and at school, finding a comfortable and smart writing spot is also essential. The two most important questions to ask when finding the perfect writing spot are, where can I get the most writing done? Am I most comfortable working on the floor? Am I most comfortable at a table? Every child works differently, same as adults. Some of us work differently as well. Where we, where we can get the most writing done is where your child should be working. And also, what do I need to keep writing? Is it a pencil? Is it a pen? Is it my computer? quiet noise, maybe I like a little bit of music, maybe I'll, the light turned down. Again, everyone works differently, but making sure your child has access to this stuff at home, just a good reading, good reading and writing spot, and also the things that they need to be successful before they get started. Before lessons, teachers will tell students what they need to have out so they can have it ready. So when it is time to go to independent work, it's all right there for them. Similar to learning how to read tricky words, it is also important to take a step back and let students work through a productive struggle in writing as well. So here are some tips on how to help your child spell a word. So what write, what, write more sounds that you hear. A lot of times when students will read a word, they might skip the beginning or ending sound. So it's important to really put your finger under the word, stretch out each sound, think about the beginning sound you hear. Stretch it out again, what's the middle sound, what's the ending sound? 
And then once they have read the word, they should read it again and again so they can really ingrain it in their brain. So the next time that they go to write the word, they might have a little bit of a better sense of how that word should be. On this slide, you will see some questions and answers that we have about writing. We took, we took a poll of what typical questions might come up. So we wanted to bring them to your attention. What if my child doesn't have any ideas? You can sit and talk to your child about a few. Your teacher may talk to your child about a few. Help your child talk about their ideas before they sit down to write. Look through pictures, go on an idea hunt about the house. Try to make it fun in any way that you can. Sometimes I'll tell students to draw the picture first before the writing. It helps get their mind flooding with ideas. Should my child's writing look polished? In writing workshop, we emphasize process over product. We want kids writing to show all of the amazing work they are doing. There will be spelling approximations and editing and revision work evident in the piece, which is why we always tell students to go back and look at your work again, reread, use a little carrot when you're writing to add in new words. All of that revision shows us their process. So we're not looking for a beautiful published work. We're looking for the process throughout. My child doesn't want to write the whole time. What can I do? Try setting a timer. This has been successful in the classroom and a lot of teachers will have digital timers or sand timers. Sometimes knowing how long they will be working is a helpful way to motivate students. Also trying short bursts of writing, perhaps 10 minutes now and then five minutes later, or putting a dot on um, a couple lines down on the paper and saying, right until you get to this dot, then we can take a break. It's okay if they can't stay focused the entire time. We're working for little goals and little successes because that will also help motivate students to write. Here are some typical materials your child may use for reading and writing. Many of these supplies were sent home at the first su supply pickup in September, maybe through, since then too. Also, these are offered in the classroom. And if you ever need access to any of this, the district can help provide it. In reading, your child will have some type of bag of books. A lot of times they will have a reading notebook or a reading folder. They will use a pencil, sometimes post-it notes, maybe even a bookmark. In writing, they will have writing notebook or paper. They will use a pencil. And sometimes we'll use colored pencils and crayons like for our pictures. And even often, if we want to use a pen or something to check our work, we can do that. At, children can do that as well. We invite you to watch the next two videos. You can find both of these videos on the district webpage. This one includes a video of Lucy Calkins, the founder of Reading and Writing Workshop, where she talks about the benefits of productive struggle. Hi. Um In this video, you will hear Shanna Schwartz discuss ways to help your child with exceptional functioning skills. She has some really great ideas and is, you can also find this on our district webpage as well. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. It has been an honor getting to work with some of our wonderful teachers and staff and faculty in our building on this project. And if you ever have any questions, our faculty is a great resource as well. And we are gonna work together this time to make everything the best it can be for these children to continue building that love for reading and writing workshop. Again, my name is Jennifer Malman. I teach first grade here. If you ever need anything, you could always reach out to me as well. Thank you so much.